it's Diana Minerva. I hope you're all having a wonderful week. And today I'd like to share with you a make for this wonderful Marlowe sweater. It's by True Bias. And as you can see, on the front cover you have the short version, but on the back here, we have a longer version with the pockets. And that's what we're going to be making today. And what I'm going to be using is this beautiful, super soft French terre. It's Minerva exclusive. And this particular design is called Savannah Daisy. It's super soft and snuggly, so it'll be perfect for a sweatshirt or sweater. And should you wish to sew along with me today, here's what you'll need to make this garment. The pattern, the fabric and a matching thread. And I will tag all those products below in the description. So before you begin, you want to wash and prepare your fabric as you would normally. And this makes sure that any shrinkage occurs now and not later on. Then take a tape measure and locate your sizing on the back of the pattern. When you've done this, we're ready to begin cutting our pattern pieces. So let's go and do that together now. So here are our pattern pieces. So here we have the back for view B. So this is the long version. You want to cut this piece on the fold here and mark your notches and you lengthen or shorten at this double line. Then we have our front piece this time you're going to cut two pieces, this is your straight grain and you're going to mark these markings here for your pocket placement. Here we have our sleeve, so this is a straight grain, you're going to cut two pieces, mark your notches. This is the wristband for all views and this is the straight grain here, cut two and here we have the pocket, again cut two and this is the straight grain. So here we have our neck band. So this one you're going to cut two pieces. Now make sure you have enough stretch. So it's 40% or more stretch in your fabric. So this is the grain line. You can lengthen or shorten at this double line here. Make a note of the notches here and here. Here we have the waistband. Now this one you're going to cut one and you're going to cut it on the fold and the fold is here. Make a note of your notches. Here we have the facing for the neckband. You're going to cut two in interfacing and the pocket facings, again, you're going to cut two. And here we have the buttonhole placement. Now on the longer version, you have four and on the shorter version, you have three buttons. Now you're ready to begin making your sweater. Now, first of all, you want to wind half of your thread onto your spool and check your machine needle is sharp. I'm using a stretch needle today, it's a size 80. You may, may wish to try out on a little piece of scrap fabric and check which needle works best for you. When you've done that, we're going to take our neckband pieces and where there are notches, these double notches here, we're going to sew with right sides facing. So bring your right sides together like this. I'm going to stitch this with a one centimetre seam here. When we've done that, we're going to press it open. Let's do that now. Now when you do this, you want to make sure that you have a stretch stitch. So you could do a slight zigzag, you can make your stitch smaller, or you can use a specific stretch stitch on your machine. Now fold your neckband in half lengthways like this and press. Then you're going to take your interfacing and on the wrong side at the bottom of your neckband, you're going to apply your interfacing. So one on this side at the bottom of the neckband and then at the other side at the bottom, you're going to apply the other piece here. Now this is to stabilize the buttonholes when you make them later on. When you've done that, while your iron is hot, take your pattern pieces for your pockets and your interfacing and a quarter inch down just from the top of that raw edge there, apply that interfacing there and press it to where your markings are, press it back ready to stitch in a moment. And it, I like to do this all in one go, so when I'm applying interfacing I like to put all my bits of interfacing on while I've got my iron out. You might wish to do the same. So we've got those pieces ready now. Now you can press back about six millimetres here if you wish or you may want to do a little hem on this bit just to keep it from folding back but you're folding this back 
with right sides facing at this crease line that you've made here at the top of your pocket and we're going to stitch one centimeter in down to here so just to here and back tack and at this point then we can cut that out and that gives us a nice I'll take a little bit more out of there point to fold back we're going to do the same at the other side Now you can top stitch along your pocket line here if you wish so I'm going to do that on mine. Now it does help to press it because it will stop that inside band from rolling out. Now on the curved part of your pocket do a line of ease stitching so just under one centimetre and you're going to do this around the curve on each side and what it does is it helps you pull that curve in with these ease stitches so that when you press it you get a nice curve I'll show you what I mean if you pull on these stitches a little it helps you sort of gather in that curve so that you can press it down get a nice curved edge. Now you can do this all the way around the pocket but I don't think that's necessary so it's entirely up to you. I'm just going to do it on each side and then pull in my stitches and press my pocket flat. Now pin your pockets to your front pieces matching your placement correctly. So I had a pin in each side and I've just moved that pin and placed it over the top. You may wish to do this with chalk but it does sometimes rub off. I've also put one in each of my curved areas here pointing outwards and I will take that out just as I get to it. Now we're going to back tack here and sew all the way around our pockets. Take my pin out at this point. I'm sewing right on the edge Try not to pull it out of shape as you go. Now you're going to stitch your front pieces to your back at the shoulder edge. Now I've pinned mine in place. You may want to add some clear tape at this point, elastic tape, to stop the shoulder stretching out if your material is very stretchy. So that's what I've done here. I've just added mine in with pins and I will stitch that in place now. Now it's a one centimetre seam. And when you've stitched your shoulders in place, you're going to press the whole seam towards the back. You may want to overlock it or zigzag stitch it first of all. Now you're going to pin your sleeve to your armhole matching the notches. So towards the back, there are two notches on your body and two notches on your sleeve. So you match these up first of all. Then there is a central one which you're going to match to your shoulder seam. And then one notch here which is at the front. So pin it all down along that line and then we're going to stitch that seam in place. Now you're going to fold your front over to your back bodice like this so that you've got the right sides facing and you're going to pin up the side seam here under your arm and along the sleeve. Now in one continuous movement we're going to stitch up that side seam Back tack and reinforce under the arm here and continue stitching all the way down the arm. Now you want to make sure that you have your notches here on your arm lined up, that your underarm seams are lined up nicely and that you have this notch here lined up in the side seam and that will make sure that you're not stretching anything out as you go. Now you're going to take your waistband and fold it in half and I've pressed mine first of all like this and then you're going to match up the notches and pin it to the bottom of your cardigan your sweater so what you need to do is match up this single notch here with the side seams press your side seams towards the back then you have these double notches here they line up with the central back so if you fold your back piece in half and clip it at the bottom you can see exactly where that is here is the other side seam and these raw edges at the front need to line up. And what you need to do is pull on it as you're pinning it 
so you're pulling it and stretching it into place. When you've done that, we're going to stitch that in place now. Now you're going to attach your neckband. So first of all, fold it back with right sides facing like this. And with a one centimetre seam, you're going to sew the bottom edges of your neckband together. Now you want to trim away a little we're going to turn it through and press that and we need to make sure we get a nice crisp angle on the other side on the right side so do the same on the opposite bottom edge so fold it in again right sides facing at this point you're going to pin your neckband to the front of your sweater now you want to make sure that you line up the bottom part here with the bottom turned under hemband and then you want to line up your notches here so we have a notch part of the way up the front there look and we're stretching it a little as we go as we pin it and then we have a single notch to the shoulder and then to the centre back we have these notch here now what you want to do again is make sure that you know exactly where your center back is so fold it in half and notch it so that it lines up with this point so here we have this central seam where we joined our two bands together so they line up and then also again your shoulder with this notch here continue down the other side so you're just pulling on it gently as you go and pinning it in place now stitch that in position a point to know is that when you pin your neckband to your cardigan front you want to make sure that the edge with the facing on so this part with the facing on is facing the right side of your fabric so this side here would have facing on and it would be facing your fabric like this as you stitch it on just make sure you check that when you begin and then when you open it up and it's like this you're going to be stitching on your buttonholes here. Now when you've edged finished your seam on the inside, we're going to edge stitch on the outside. So we're pressing the seam towards the cardigan away from the facing. And we're just edge stitching it all the way down to keep that seam down and lying flat. With right sides facing, you're going to stitch the long edge of your cuffs down here or your wristbands when you've done that you're going to turn it to the right side like this making your wristband you can open up that seam on each side to make sure that it's lying flat and it's not as bulky then either if you open them both up like this now with a stretch stitch if you wish you can just baste around the top of this part to stop it moving around so I'm going to do that now repeat this step on both cuffs then you're going to take the arm of your sweater and here we have the underarm seam. Here is your seam of your cuff. Pop that over like this. Line up this seam with the underarm seam. Stretch to fit. And pin in place. Stitch this in position. Using your buttonhole guide, mark and stitch your buttonholes on your right front. So here is the finished cardigan. So it's good length. Well I hope you've enjoyed sewing along with me today. I think this would look good in any sweater knit. 
polar fleece, maybe a ponte, sweatshirting, all kinds of options that you can go for with this particular sweater and I like that you can do it in the crop version as well, that gives it a nice bit of versatility depending on what outfit you're going to wear it with. Remember to like and follow Minerva to get more video content like this every week and of course you can take a look at the Minerva Craft Club to get 10% off all your orders for a whole year. You can also create a free account with us to connect with our wonderful worldwide sewing community and share all your projects and makes in one place. Now if you like what I'm wearing today, this is another one of our Minerva exclusive French Terry fabrics and this particular design is called Boudoir Bouquet and this is a new look pattern 6632. I will tag these products below in case you're interested in making this as well. That's all from me today. I hope to be back with another sew along really soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.